with that, Jerry May Garden has got another stellar work for us. Thank you, President David. Um, it's been exactly 105 days since I joined the staff of the chamber for the East County, right? I'm frequently asked by people, um, how are you enjoying your, your tour of duty? And I have to tell you, quite honestly, it's been a great time. It's a good organization, good mission, uh, great bones, a good board of directors. Uh, it's just an excellent place to be uh, at this time. But I'll tell you, the real nugget of value in all of that is the staff. Uh, I've had an opportunity to work with some of the brightest, uh, talented people. I've been around a long time. I'm the old guy in the barn, but it's a wonderful challenge and it's been a, a real thrill. And one of our speak our speaker today is one of those staff members. Uh, Kelly Reeser uh, serves as the Director of Entrepreneurial Development for the Greater Pensacola Chamber. In this role, Kelly is tasked with supporting our region's high-growth entrepreneurs with both startup and growth strategies. She accomplishes this goal by uh, running the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, that's a training program for students in grades 6 through 12. She manages the Gulf Coast uh, uh, Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, an innovation and technology-based incubator, which I know she'll tell you more about in just a little bit. She works as partner with entrepreneurs to host Startup Weekend Pensacola and by coordinating efforts for other community partners interested in business startups. Kelly currently serves on the board of directors for the Business Incubator Association, Young Ambassadors Council for the Florida House in Washington, D.C., and was a member of the Leadership Pensacola class in 2013. She also serves as a volunteer with middle school students at Olive Baptist Church. Kelly holds a Master of Arts degree in Development Management and Public Policy from Georgetown University and a Bachelor's degree in Spanish and Latin American Studies from Southern Methodist University. She's a native of Pensacola, an avid traveler, a new mom. She enjoys spending time with her husband, Chris, and her baby girl, Evangelina. Please welcome Kelly Reese. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Rotary, for having me today. Um, we absolutely, for the last 105 days, have enjoyed having um, Jerry as captain of our ship. Um, we've enjoyed bringing him up to speed on all that we do. Um, maybe first and foremost, we're thankful that he asks what we do, wants to know what we do, um, not just from a high level, but also um, kind of bring the asks to be brought down into the weeds of tell me how you do this and, and why we do it. Um, he's a very strategic thinker, and I just see nothing but bright prospects for the Chamber moving forward, and I'm very happy to be a part of the organization. Um, so again, thank you for having me today. We are going to, um, I do have a few slides this direction. Um, if you how you just split your time, bring me up here, slides over there, um, we'll do that. I am going to spend, and Jerry's asking me to spend the majority of my time today talking about the Incubator, which is the Gulf Coast Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I will um, reference it as the CIE. A couple other um, umbrella programs that we had talked about, uh, that you mentioned in the bio, was Young Entrepreneurs Academy and Startup Weekend, which we will um, touch on those um, towards the end of the program, but also a way to start is by saying thank you. This Rotary Club um, gave uh, money to um, make Startup Weekend possible. Um, it's an event that happened in October, and again, I'll tell you more about that and the successes of that um, later on in the presentation. Um, could I ask, I should like to poll the room, because I always like to know who it is that I'm speaking to. Could you, just by show of hands, if you are an entrepreneur, would describe yourself as an entrepreneur in this room, could you please raise your hand? Also, the, keep your hand raised. Also, those of you who would consider yourselves entrepreneurial, but perhaps find yourself in a corporate environment, which... To me, those are very much entrepreneurs as well. So thank you very much. All right, so I, I am preaching a bit to the choir, uh, but I do want to tell you what we have available for those who are uh, beginning, um, I guess, are both in the startup mode as well as in the emerging mode with their businesses. So um, starting out, the incubator is a partnership between the Greater Pensacola Chamber and Pensacola State College. We've been in partnership since 2008 on um, on really a facility. Um, if those of you who are, are, are not familiar with the concept of an incubator, but it is a facility, it is a geography 
where businesses can receive concentrated growth uh, assistance strategically to help them um, both grow their revenue and employees. A partnership between uh, the Chamber and Skull State College funded in large part through the Vision 2015 Capital Campaign for Economic Development. Our mission statement is that we act as a catalyst to support entrepreneurs with the potential to create, to create high wage jobs that can sustain the long term economic growth for the greater Pensacola area, falling right in line with uh, Vision 2015, our strategy for economic development. The nuts and bolts of the incubator is that um, it is for technology or innovative startup companies in, um, by providing shared office space, business development services, mentorship consultation. So I don't want to um, I don't want to over-explain for those of you who are familiar, but, uh, but it is a, those are kind of the nuts and bolts. Office space, infrastructure is provided. It's designed and purposed to be a bridge between um, a man and a dog in the garage with an idea. Um, he maybe has gotten that, um, that idea off the ground and now is ready to start meeting with clients, needs the legitimacy of office space. Um, we are designed to be that bridge between the home office and um, the ability to afford office space, uh, say real office space, we are real office space, but um, real office space in, in downtown Pensacola. We are that, um, that, that gap, we fill that gap. Um, we do uh, provide, there is uh, the facility that is the CIE, but perhaps the, the true value is brought by the programming of the CIE. We do have a um, business coach on staff, um, he's yours truly, very own Rotarian here today, Bob Larkin, is um, employed by us part-time to meet with these companies. He, um, he and I sit down and we talk through the financials with the companies and we talk through growth strategies. Bob, from his background in um, organizational management, helps uh, the company saying, well, I've, I've got four people right now, but I, I need eight in the next six months. What do I do with them? I don't even know where to find employees. I don't know how to, um, how to even begin to manage that many people. Um, Bob can step in and give some strategies from that standpoint. Uh, most recently, we had a conversation with a, with a tenant who was looking to do some profit sharing and some, um, and, uh, some bonuses. What's the best strategy? What have you seen work in order to properly and adequately motivate your people as well as reward them for work well done. So that, um, we have those business coaching services. We have mentorship from area professionals. I see Ron Jackson in the room. He was on our founding policy board. We've got a, a group of 20 um, area professionals, both in accounting, um, legal services, um, insurance. We've got um, a, a broad representation of the community and individuals who are say sympathetic to the cause, but who have a desire or passion to see small businesses grow in our area and become, I say quote unquote, the next big thing. So, um, so Ron did a great job, served many years with us on our policy board, just passed that baton to Judy Gunn now, she's doing a great job with us. Um, but not only from a policy, kind of a high level standpoint does our policy board help, but they also say, I want to meet these businesses. If you're struggling with um, an accounting, issue in your business, if that's your barrier to growth, then we want to connect you with an accountant or a lawyer or whoever it would be in the area that could help you um, cross that hurdle as, as quickly as possible. Um, and then the entrepreneurship education courses, we have partnered um, with the SBDC in the past. We've had um, uh, the College of Business um, we're working together to provide that curriculum and that content that's meaningful to our entrepreneurs. What we've learned, what we've um, I would have to say, I'll back, backtrack a little bit, but my strength really, I have not started my own business, so I don't necessarily have my own story to share, but I do consider myself a very good listener, and I'm a, very much a people person, so I'm asking these entrepreneurs all the time, what would be of benefit to you? How can we help you? Um, if I were to start this 12-week course at night from 6 to 8 p.m., is that what you would need? And what I've learned is that maybe by nature of being an entrepreneur, they're not good at committing to things six weeks out or eight weeks out because they don't know really what their business is going to do tomorrow, much less project out six to eight weeks. And so um, they typically ask for, from a programming standpoint, they're typically asking for, connect me with somebody who has done it. Some, connect me with somebody who's been there, done that. I want to know how they went from four to eight employees and how did they um, weather that storm. Um, we had a, last week, no, the week before, just before Thanksgiving, it was um, Global Entrepreneurship Week. 
Did we all know that that existed? But it was Global Entrepreneurship Week. So we hosted a couple events at the CIE, bringing entrepreneurs together. We had, um, uh, cleverly or aptly named, um, we had lunch with Vernon, a gentleman named Vernon Newman, who has started multiple businesses. He is definitely the quintessential serial entrepreneur, but lives in Pensacola. His most recent venture is a company called Me Tagger. Um, but he basically came in and told us his story from the um, early 90s when he was in Silicon Valley. He considers himself a Silicon Valley veteran, which those are the kind of people that these tech companies want to hear from. And they want to hear that, I think it was March, forgive me if I get the date wrong, March 20th, 2000, he said it's the, the same day as the peak of the NASDAQ, but his company sold for $9 billion. And so they say, oh my goodness, I have, we have this kind of genius and talent right here in Pensacola talking to our incubator tenants. It was very much a treat. So we said, well, gosh, what did you do then? And uh, so he started a new business and did it again and did it again because it's the drive, it's the passion of making and creating um, that, that drives our entrepreneurs. And again, I'm preaching to the choir because you all know that because those are the things that, um, that keep you going as well in your businesses. So I'm getting off my slides. Um, so these are some of our success stories. Um, our most recent graduate was a company called the Analyst Group. They are, they were our first um, experience of start to finish seeing the program work. And I guess they were kind of our first validation that it does work. Um, the program is, by recommendation, a three-year program. You start at a price point in year one that is um, advantageous to the company, and then we progress to you um, in year two and year three, um, progressively gets you to the starting rate of uh, fair market value office space in downtown Pensacola. And, um, and so through that, as well as the mentorship services, the analyst group was able to, um, was able to grow, grow, um, I won't say exponentially, but uh, they currently have 17 employees and they did, um, upon graduation from the CIE, deemed that it was best for their company to move to downtown Milton, which is definitely still in our region. We are still grateful for that. Um, but they were able to say that, um, you know, that they, <clears throat> both through the price point of the rent, um, as well as the services, that we were um, able to help them contain their costs while they grew their revenue and built their employees. So definitely exciting. We've got College Frog is another business you may or may not have heard of um, in the community. They've received quite a bit of press in recent, um, I'd say in the last probably six to eight months. Um, but Jeff, their CEO, would say a year and a half ago, he was the only employee sitting in that office over at the CIE. But now, people in the accounting industry are buying their product. Um, they have seven employees. As of this morning, we learned, Jerry, that, um, that they have seven employees. So that company is growing both in revenue and in employees, which is, um, which is pretty amazing. So who does the CIE serve? Um, we throw around words like innovation or tech-based type businesses, kind of, um, I say loosely, but we, we, I throw them out there typically assuming that everybody knows what, um, what it is that I'm talking about. But, um, but the innovative or the proprietary part of your process is a, um, is a, a criteria for application or for membership in the CIE. And it's got to be something that is scalable. There's got to be a part of your process. Um, I'll take, for example, a staffing company. We do have a current tenant that is a staffing company. Um, but we don't want to just be their brick and mortar office to compete with Land Rover, to compete with Manpower, Kelly Services, or whoever, um, we don't want to offset their rent in order to that they can compete better. Um, that's of course not our, our goal or our mission, but they do have a, um, a software platform that they are looking to roll out, um, hopefully in beta testing in the next um, probably two to three months. And, uh, and that software platform would help them, would allow them to scale far beyond our region. That would be a source of revenue that they'd be bringing new money into our economy. So, um, so that's again where I say the innovative or the proprietary part of your process, something that can scale in both terms of revenue and employees. Um, got to be a proof of, uh, clearly demonstrated proof of concept. Either somebody's got to be buying your product. You got to have, um, got to be at revenue, generating revenue, or at least have um, some type of proof of concept. We have a, a current tenant who um, does not have, has not made, uh, made revenue yet, but they have multiple patents, and so we know that when that business is at the point where it's ready to launch, that it's well protected and it's going to be, um, and it's going to be a, a viable, thriving business. Um, one to two years minimum minimum experience. Um, so this really isn't a the CIE isn't really for pure startups. If you were to come up to me today and say I have an idea, I would say great, go work on it, come back and see me in a year or two. 
um, because we definitely, we're not in the business necessarily of, of startups, I would say that quote unquote, because, um, because some of our services just don't make sense. Um, and it may, you may get two months into that idea and realize that you don't have a business and you've wasted two months of rent. We don't want to, um, we don't want to put you in that position either. So, um, so that's where we're at by way of who the, the, the CIE serves. Um, so our application process easily found on our website as well. Engineering and Planning Resources is a, um, a tenant that um, is our current longest standing tenant. They are planning to, it's a minority owned, woman owned business, and they're looking to graduate in April. And she, um, she made the comment to me last week, and I said, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to share that, because that's exactly what we want to be. Is she, she's currently looking for that office space in downtown Pensacola, and she's saying, you know, it was tough when you raised us at that 30 year uh, price point for rent, but she said, that's right at what we're looking at when we're looking at new office space downtown. That kind of helped us to stomach that cost, that price differential a little bit better. So, um, so when she said it, it really works for us, I said, I'm writing that down and I'm going to quote you on it. So it was very exciting. We're looking to, um, to have a, a big celebration for EPR as they, um, as they go forward. Um, our current tenants, Paysell, College Frog, as I mentioned, EPR, two employees at staffing, co staffing company that we mentioned. There is also another, um, two other aspects. There's um, one aspect of virtual tenancy. So perhaps you're not quite, you're, you're, you're at revenue, but you're not quite ready or don't necessarily need or want the office space, but you want to be associated with the program. We have an option called virtual tenancy. So you're essentially working out of your home still, but you can come use an office uh, when you, when you have need for a meeting, you can use the conference space, you can use the, um, you know, the, the facilities, the programming, the um, access to Bob as our business coach, um, all of that is included in virtual tenancy, but maybe you, like I said, you don't need a full-time office space. So we've got several companies on the right that are, um, that are considered virtual tenants. And then there's also affiliate and light companies. So Innovation Coast, as well as Florida First Capital Finance, are housed in our facility, but they do not um, don't necessarily um, a company that we're working with in the same way that we would a college frog or a, um, a two employee. Um, next program, and my, my apologies, I believe what happened here is I think I made my PowerPoint slides on a different version um, than what's displaying here because I promise it was beautiful a couple hours ago. Um, so the Young Entrepreneurs Academy is a new program that we started this year. Um, this, um, here's where I'm kind of expanding from the CIE. The uh, Young Entrepreneurs Academy is a national nonprofit organization based out of New York. We licensed with them to bring the curriculum to this community, and it's for students in grades 6 through 12. And these students are um, from local public schools, private schools, and we've got homeschoolers that are involved. So it's kind of cool the, the diversity of students that are kind of across the spectrum we've been able to, um, to compile in this class. There are currently 17 students. Got sixth grade girls that probably couldn't see over this podium, and we've got high school seniors that are going through this class together. And um, they're not only learning the components of how to build a business, um, we're telling them that the definition of entrepreneurship, and specifically as it relates to this program, is how do you take an idea or an interest that you have and make a viable enterprise out of that? We're teaching social entrepreneurship, we're teaching, of course, for profit businesses and non for profit businesses, etc. Um, but it's, it's we're at week nine, I believe, so we've been going through nine weeks of this program. Extremely successful. The kids have some really cool ideas. We've got some benchmark programs that, um, that we're going to be hosting, so I invite you to uh, keep an ear out. In March, we'll be having a Shark Tank-like investor panel on that. So if, you, um, if anybody ever seen the show Shark Tank, we like the show Shark Tank when the, the investors buy off chunks of their businesses. Um, but of course our investors are going to be local philanthropists that are donating um, in grant form their money um, to these students. But let's, let me take for example my 6th and 7th grade brother and sister um, that are in, uh, that are from Gulf Breeze. They are very interested or they're starting an exotic spice business. So they're going to purchase and learn the process of I'm going to purchase these spices um, from India, wherever it is that they are pulling um, their resources from. We're going to repackage them, we're going to include a recipe, you know, we're going to sell it's, how does she put it? She's so cute. Um, the sixth grade girl says that it's going to be easier than making spaghetti. And so they're going to package all of these spices, they're going to put it in one, um, in, in one package, like I said, with a recipe, and they're going to sell this product. 
And so these, um, these students are going to create a business plan, they're going to create um, a, a website, they're going to create an e-commerce piece to that website, and um, they're going to pitch before p and investors at UWF at the Center for Fine and Performing Arts. They're going to have, I can, I can only imagine, my little girl who's this big, she's going to be before this big PowerPoint screen with 300 of her closest friends and family pitching her business idea to this panel of investors for the likes of um, you know, the name is Sandy Sansing, Gwen Studer, we've got uh, Pinier that's going to be represented, um, Justin Beck, we've got a lot of these um, very savvy business individuals from the community that, um, that, that will be determining how to divvy out these funds to these students. And so she may request, she may say, I need a thousand dollars to do my business. And you say, well, in the next three months, you're really only going to need 500, so we'll give you 500 dollars. And they get that money and they build their business from March to May. And then in May, we'll ho host a trade show um, in partnership with Gallery Night. We'll be in front of Jefferson Square, um, and these students are going to be selling their wares. So keep an ear out, come join us at all of those events. Very exciting. Um, another neat piece of that is there's mentors that are, um, that are part of the program. Seven weeks, these um, business professionals have, are looking over the, the shoulder of these student businesses and, um, and are helping them. So I see more uh, Sullivan in the crowd today. He is going to start next week by giving the students an overview of accounting, what you need to know as a business startup. And then for seven weeks, he's committing his time to take one of these student businesses and walk them through the process. So I don't want to know how much more it would cost if I were trying to um, buy those services, purchase those services, but he is donating them, uh, those services to the students, which is extremely exciting. We're, um, we're thankful for his and others' generosity in the community that are going to be doing that with us. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Startup Weekend. This is what um, I'm sure Frank probably presented, so you know more or less what the program is about. We've got several in this room who have been involved with that. Um, it is an extreme success. Um, in October, we hosted Pensacola's first Startup Weekend, and we had over, um, I think we had 92 registered attendees. We built um, 12 businesses in the matter of 54 hours or one weekend. Um, we had a first, second, third place winner, and uh, those companies are now affiliated in conversations with the CIE about how can they continue if they want to continue, um, both through services from the CIE, etc. So that was an extremely successful event. And um, Jerry, please keep me keep tabs on my time. Um, so I did want to include this what's next. Um, what's next both for the CIE entrepreneurship and all of this momentum that is growing in our community, not only around what, um, what some would call a startup culture or an entrepreneurial culture. What's next? What are we moving towards? Um, some exciting things that you'll see at the CIE. Um, we're building this co-working space and, um, and apparently it's a, not a new concept, but it is it has really excited our developer and designer community. So people who, as uh, Frank would say, tell computers what to do, versus those of us who the computer tells us what to do. So those who tell computers what to do, this kind of space really excites them. So we're going to begin not only leasing to companies who are in that, um, who are in that emerging phase, but we're also going to begin leasing to individuals who could benefit from working in a space like this. So that will be hopefully come online in the next month. Um, we're going to be we're in conversations with UWF, Pensacola State, the SBDC about, um, about how do we streamline the programming for entrepreneurship. We've got Dr. Ranelli with the College of Business. We've got Dr. Meadows with Pensacola State College, Mike Myrie with the SBDC. We're, um, we're having that conversation, not only saying what can each of our institutions bring to the table, but listening to the entrepreneurs, what would you benefit from? What do we need to do for you? Lead that conversation, please, entrepreneurs. So, um, so again, very excited about all the things that are going on in the community. And, um, and I do just, again, want to extend a, a thank you to, um, to the Rotary for allowing me to speak today. Um, but also just thank you for what you do to continually, every day, strengthen our business community. And um, if you have any interest in working with entrepreneurs, or if you know someone who would benefit from uh, being a member of our CIE, I definitely um, ask that you contact me, information there on the screen. Uh, but Jerry and others can, uh, can send you my way as well. And I would be more than happy to take any questions if anybody has any questions. I'd be happy to direct them Jerry's way. <laughs> The facility is located at 14 West Garden Street, so um, 
couple blocks past the chamber on the right hand side or north side, right. which is Gulf Power, Bill Pay on the first floor, and Pensacola State College downtown campus, or the second and third floor in that facility. Yes. How much more room do you have for uh, bringing in the new company? Excellent question. Um, right now, oh, um, so the first question was where's the facility located? 14 West Garden Street. Um, next question was how much more space do we have? Um, we do have a goal of keeping the build or keeping the building at 80% occupancy. Right now we're at 55% occupancy because we've had some shifting and adjusting of, of clients. And I don't want to put my cart before my horse, but we do have um, a company that's looking to come in and take up about 1,800 square feet, which would put me at about 80% occupancy. So I'd say I have two office spaces, one about 420 square feet and the other about 575 square feet. Um, Looking at total leaseable about 7,000, 7,200 square feet on the two floors combined. So we got space, yes, sir? What's the cost Excellent question. Um, I would say that the question is what's the cost outlay for the chamber? And I would say that it is about a $90,000 a year operation, and we recoup. It's been different in years past, obviously, because our tenants, our tenancy, and um, our building occupation is, has fluctuated. But I would say that we typically are able to recoup through rent um, about sixty, maybe seventy-five percent of that. Classic story about a, about Pete's in the garage. Well, she's got 54 geeks in the building over there, and they're doing fantastic things. And Kelly, we want to thank you for your work. Uh, this is a memento of your visit. Thank you for come back again uh, soon. Thank you very much. Uh, Kelly, also, we're going to be donating a book to a local school uh, in commemoration of your visit here today with us. Exciting stuff. We really appreciate you sharing all that information.